the shocking impact of El Nino on Earth in 2024. In 2023, the relentless increase in global heating will continue, bringing ever more disruptive weather that is the signature calling card of accelerating climate breakdown. According to NASA, 2022 was one of the hottest years ever recorded on Earth. This is extraordinary because the recurrent climate pattern across the tropical Pacific, known as ENSO, El Nino Southern Oscillation, was in its cool phase. During this phase called La Nina, the waters of the equatorial Pacific are noticeably cooler than normal, which influences weather patterns around the world. La Nina brings its own extreme weather to parts of the planet, but it also helps keep a lid on global temperatures. This means that, despite the recent widespread heat waves, wildfires and droughts, we have actually been spared the worst of global heating in 2022. The scary thing is that this La Nina will end and eventually transition into the better known El Nino, which sees the waters of the equatorial Pacific becoming much warmer. When it does, the extreme weather that has rampaged across our planet in 2021 and 2022 will pale into insignificance. Current forecasts suggest that La Nina will continue into early 2023, making it fortuitously for us. One of the longest on record, it began in spring 2020. Then the equatorial Pacific will begin to warm again. Whether or not it becomes hot enough for a fully-fledged El Nino to develop, 2023 has a very good chance, without the cooling influence of La Nina, of being the hottest year on record. A global average temperature rise of 1.5 degrees Celsius is widely regarded as marking a guardrail beyond which climate breakdown becomes dangerous. Above this figure, our once stable climate will begin to collapse in earnest, becoming all-pervasive, affecting everyone, and insinuating itself into every aspect of our lives. In 2021, the figure, compared to the 1850 to 1900 average, was 1 1.2 degrees Celsius, while in 2019, before the development of the latest La Nina, it was a worryingly high 1.36 degrees Celsius. As the heat builds again in 2023, it is perfectly possible that we will touch or even exceed 1.5 degrees Celsius for the first time. But what will this mean exactly? I wouldn't be at all surprised to see the record for the highest recorded temperature. Currently 54.4 degrees Celsius, 129.9 degrees Fahrenheit, in California's Death Valley, shattered. This could well happen somewhere in the Middle East or South Asia, where temperatures could climb above 55 degrees Celsius. The heat could exceed the blistering 40 degrees Celsius mark again in the UK, and for the first time, top 50 degrees Celsius in parts of Europe. Inevitably, higher temperatures will mean that severe drought will continue to be the order of the day, slashing crop yields in many parts of the world. In 2022, extreme weather resulted in reduced harvests in China, India, South America, and Europe, increasing food insecurity. Stocks are likely to be lower than normal going into 2023, so another round of poor harvests could be devastating. Resulting food shortages in most countries could drive civil unrest, while rising prices in developed countries will continue to stoke inflation and the cost of living crisis. One of the worst affected regions will be the Southwest United States. Here, the longest drought in at least 1,200 years has persisted for 22 years so far, reducing the level of Lake Mead on the Colorado River so much that power generation capacity at the Hoover Dam has fallen by almost half. Upstream, the Glen Canyon Dam, on the rapidly shrinking Lake Powell, is forecast to stop generating power in 2023 if the drought continues. The Hoover Dam could follow suit in 2024. Together, these lakes and dams provide water and power for millions of people in seven states, including California. The breakdown of this supply would be catastrophic for agriculture, industry, and populations right across the region. La Nina conditions have a tendency to supercharge hurricane development in the Atlantic, so it was no surprise that the 22 season saw the formation of three especially destructive storms in the form of Hurricanes Ian, Nicole, and Fiona. As the next El Nino builds, on the other hand, Atlantic hurricane activity tends to be damped down, so inhabitants of cities like Miami and New Orleans might be breathing a sigh of relief. This might well be premature. Destructive Atlantic storms are perfectly possible, even during relatively quiet seasons. Atlantic hurricane activity in 2023 is forecast to be around 15% below average, but two or three intense hurricanes are still predicted, any one of which could cause massive damage if it makes landfall in a densely populated area. In Brazil, where it is still spring, the National Institute of Meteorology 
issued a red alert for heat in the past week across several regions. Rio de Janeiro experienced its hottest day of the year, reaching 41.9 C on Saturday, recorded at Morambaia Station in Rio's western zone. The El Nino phenomenon is expected to last until at least next April, the World Meteorological Organization has said. With this year already set to be the warmest on record, 2024 may be even warmer than 2023, said DLIMMO Secretary General Petteri Tallis. El Nino is typically associated with higher atmospheric temperatures, particularly in the year after it develops, but Tallis noted that the heat-trapping effect of greenhouse gases produced by human activity was responsible for the heat records being recorded so far. El Nino is also associated with wetter conditions in some parts of the world. The DNMO predicted more rain in the next three months in parts of the Horn of Africa, South America, and Central and Eastern Asia. Extreme events such as heat waves, drought, wildfires, heavy rain and floods will be enhanced in some regions, with major impacts, said Talas. In Somalia, the UN Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs blamed El Nino for exacerbating the worst flooding the country has experienced in a century and said it was providing assistance to 680,000 people. The El Nino flood's death toll was put at 50. The Somali Disaster Management Agency said on social media platform X on Thursday. In Dubai, the host city for the upcoming UN Climate Summit, floods at the end of last week led to safety alerts from police, the cancellation of flights, and the suspension of schools. In recent days, regions across the Southern Hemisphere, from Kenya to the Dominican Republic, have suffered inundation from heavy rainfall that has caused danger and widespread disruption. This year's El Nino episode has so far been less powerful than previous ones in 1997 and 2015 to 2016, but was still described as strong by the WMO. The difference between monthly sea surface temperatures in the affected part of the Pacific and the long-term average rose to 1.5 C in September, compared with 0.5 C above average in May, the WMO said. Looking ahead to next year, Walter Bathton, a scientist at Columbia University's International Research Institute for Climate and Society, said years of strong Pacific Ocean warming such as that the world was experiencing now had often been followed by years of strong Pacific Ocean cooling in the opposite effect to El Nino known as La Nina. A strong warming event in 1997 and 1998 was, for example, followed by a prolonged cooling effect between mid-1998 and early 2001. And during the triple whammy of successive La Nina cooling events between 2020 and 2022, the phenomenon remained relatively weak. But this alternating pattern is not guaranteed, and conditions for each year are particularly hard to forecast until the spring predictability barrier between March and May has passed. Last year, the warmest on record was the La Nina year of Pacific Ocean cooling, while the previous hottest year was 2016, an El Nino year of Pacific heating. El Nino occurs on average every two to seven years and typically lasts up to a year. Both the cooling and warming trends in the Pacific Ocean have localized knock-on effects that are strongest in regions close to the equator, and neither one can trigger as significant changes to global temperatures as the ones brought about by the heat-trapping effect of greenhouse gases, Dafjin said. The only hope to have a consistent robust cooling of global temperatures is by reducing greenhouse gases. There's no mystery or other way about it. So guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. For more interesting content, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more awesome content. Have a nice day and I will see you in the next video.